So this is going to be video one of the uh, 300 blackout series that I'm doing. <clears throat> so I'm going to essentially I'm going over this gun here. This is a 300 blackout, kind of dubbed it the Predator, super quiet. Um, so I'll go over the setup with that, how it came about. Um, I don't like to use the word build, but put it together the way that I did. And I use pieces uh, from this one here. Uh, so these two guns, both of these are Remington 700 uh, 5R barrels. Um, so <clears throat> the way the, this is a 308, that one's the 300 blackout. So the way I, I did these when I bought them, I knew that I wanted both of these guns. Um, but I knew on the 308, I wanted to get a stock like this to get it set up for long range. But I knew I didn't like the stock that these came with. So what I did was essentially I took the stock off of this one and I put it on that one, which was a significantly better stock than it came with. It came with a plastic hole, ho ho I don't know what they were called, Hogue, Hogue stock, which were, I think if you're going to take the gun in, in like wet conditions because it had this rubbery feel, it would be pretty decent. Um, but that's not what I wanted. So what I did is I had already bought this one that came with that cheap stock. Um, what I actually bought first was this stock. And this gun fits in this stock and looks really good. So that's how I put it together first, is the 300 Blackout was sitting in this stock here. So I was waiting on, this is the Gen 2 5R, so I was waiting at, for them actually to be released. Um, I got it pre-ordered, so I was waiting for it to come in so I can switch the stocks. So once it did come in, um, I switched the stocks and got everything set up. Um, and then that's where this one kind of leaves the picture. And we're going to stick with the 300 Blackout and go over the setup. So the purpose for the 300 Blackout, the reason that I was wanting it, well, the idea was to have a 30 caliber that I could shoot subsonic, um, obviously with the silencer. And my purpose was, because oh, I was shooting 22s, I wanted to shoot further than I could shoot with a 22 and stay subsonic. I thought, man, the 300 blackout would do really well at that. So, <clears throat> so what I did is, obviously, bipod. Um, pretty much the first modification I did was I bed, bedded the rifle. Um, I used, like I think, JB Weld. So I bedded the rifle. Of course, subsonic, you're not gonna get a lot of movement, anything like that, but I just wanted to make sure I did everything that I could do to, to get as much accuracy out of it as possible. Um, so first thing I did is I bed the rifle. Um, with the subsonic, uh, I ran out of room <clears throat> in the turret. I think it had zero MOA on the rail. So I did some math and figured out that with a 45, MOA rail that with the this is in an SWFA the SS Super Sniper uh, 20X that with a 45 MOA rail with subsonics I can still zero at 100 yards even actually 50 yards and still reach 500 yards I can actually reach five over 500 if I do a holdover I uh, got the bubble level. I wanted to get it as low as possible. So I went, I think these are actually low rings, but on on a gun like this, you can see right here, it's really close. So I want to get as low as possible um, just to, to minimize any kind of recoil. So it's coming straight back when everything as low as possible. Um, and then I've got, I think I've got popsicle sticks at the back of this one uh, with, with the cheek weld. Uh, pad on there and then I've got this thing on here it's a uh, I can't remember who makes it but it's just a monopod uh, and that's the setup for this and of course I got the silencer on there so several years ago um, when 300 blackout got popular I was all over it um, I got it started reloading um, the results results were not good at extended ranges uh, I could not hit anything at 500 yards so I was very displeased um, I was probably having at least a 20 inch spread 
So then I had to figure out why. Um, so did a bunch of tests, different powders, different stuff like that, and came to the conclusion that the between the standard deviation and extreme spread of this bullet uh, was a huge, huge, huge factor because it's going subsonic. So that standard deviation, let's say 50 feet per second, um, made a difference of you know five or ten inches on top of let's say let's say it's one MOA that gives you you know best case scenario 500 yards five inches if your extreme spread um, causes a 10 inch difference that means 15 inches um, with wind anything like that you know let's say that it's going to add a, a couple extra inches on there so it just didn't work out so um, I tried a bunch of different powders I was able to come up with a, uh, a formula to or powder powder charge all that recipe I guess I should say that I could pretty consistently get one MOA or better at a hundred yards um, and then at 200 it just grew and then further out it just got worse so I'm gonna go back and reevaluate everything and I'm gonna see I'm gonna try some different powders I'm gonna do everything over again just try to get those hopefully it'll be better but I'm probably gonna end up with the same results um, and then I'm gonna start looking at uh, the cases themselves so doing some neck turning and seeing if I can do anything to bring that um, standard deviation and extreme spread down to see if I can get this um, a little bit more reliable at that 500 yard range or even if it's even if it's only 300 if I can get it you know 10 inch group at 300 something like that I just want to figure out everything I can do to get the best groups at the longest distance and whatever that is um, so this is the gun I'll be doing everything with and stay tuned I'll be going through different powders um, get some video of shooting this at at those longer ranges I'll be showing what kind of groups I can get at 100 yards kind of just walk you through everything for this but this will be the first episode of the uh, 300 blackout long range